Right, so full disclosure, this is my first time putting myself in a video, so I'm feeling about as awkward as is humanly possible. So I tried Wim Hof for three weeks, and I, I think it was... Oh! Woo! Oh, oh, don't be a bitch, just do it. Well anyway, this is what happened. I want to talk about Wim Hof. If you haven't heard the name Wim Hof, you've probably heard of his title, which is The Iceman. And that name might sound like the name of a serial killer at the moment, but as I go on and describe him a bit more, it's going to make more sense. Wim Hof gained most of his popularity to begin with from being able to withstand incredibly low temperatures, temperatures that would kill most normal people. I mean, the guy's just got this stupid list of achievements that goes reaching off into the distance. He's climbed Kilimanjaro in his underwear. He's run a half marathon barefoot within the Arctic Circle. He's sat submerged in ice for over two hours. He's, he held the world record for swimming under ice for a fair amount of time. And granted, they seem to follow a particular theme. Maybe that's how he got the nickname. It gets crazier. <laughs> He claims that he is able to manually influence his nervous system, specifically his autonomous nervous system. Well, the autonomous nervous system is broken into two sections, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system covers things to do with the fight-flight response, whereas the parasympathetic nervous system affects things to do with feeding and breathing. Wim Hof claims to be able to control both of these to be able to do things that you normally can't do at will. For example, like if you just sit down, you sit in a chair and you just try and raise your heart rate without moving or exerting yourself in any way, you won't be able to do that. I mean, you can try, you'll look really stupid, but I mean, you know, give it a shot, maybe, maybe you can. One of the most impressive things that he claims to be able to do is he claims to be able to control his autonomous nervous system and therefore directly influence his immune system to fight off infection. Given everything that's going on with, you know, the world at the moment, I think you can see why he's suddenly gotten a lot more popular if he claims that he can fight off infection with the power of his body. Now when you first hear someone say something like that, you probably assume this guy is he's full of it, he's lying, this is complete rubbish, this is quackery, it's a hoax. But he's managed to prove in many different scenarios, most notably being a medical experiment that took place wherein he was injected with an endotoxin, which should have caused some kind of bodily effect. But using his techniques, he managed to suppress that poison and come out the other end totally fine. Along with this list of physical things, he claims that it reduces stress, helps with mental health, and a slew of other things. So the question of the century is what is this technique with which he can do all these amazing things? Brace yourself, right? This special technique is breathing. Breathing. Yeah, breathing. Oh yeah, and um, cold. Cold, yeah. So it's breathing and cold. Breathing and cold. Breathing and cold. What the f Right, so Wim Hof, also known as the Iceman, is a crazy weird Dutch guy that claims that he can control every aspect of his immune system with breathing and cold water. That's that's what he is. And the craziest part of all of this, after having just finished that sentence, is that he's telling the truth, or at the very least believes he's telling the truth, which just makes this whole situation even crazier, to be honest. So Wim Hof has a set of breathing techniques that he prescribes along with regular cold exposure. These together allow you to tap into your autonomous nervous system and control your immune system. Is it true? I don't know. But frankly, quarantine's got me really, really bored, so I'm gonna give it a shot. And worst case scenario is I die of exposure. Right, so I just got up about five minutes ago and I'm gonna try this breathing technique for the first time. I'm curious to see what will happen and judging from everything that all the information given, it seems like something that would be best done in the morning. So here we go. So Wim Hof's breathing techniques consist of two main parts. The first part is the hyperventilation technique. 
For this part, you want to take in deep breaths, deep, like as much air as your lungs can hold. And then when you exhale those breaths, you don't want to breathe all your air out, you just want to breathe out some of it. And then you take in another deep breath and breathe out partially, and another deep breath and breathe out partially, and so on, for about 30 to 40 breaths. The logic behind doing this is that it's going to over-oxygenate your blood, or so Wim Hof says, and this apparently leads to these abilities that he talks about. The second part of the breathing technique is the breath hold. Once you've finished your 30 to 40 breaths hyperventilation, you breathe all of your air out and just sit there with empty lungs. Now that sounds really, really odd, because you shouldn't be able to hold that for very long, but you will be able to hold that for far, far longer than you expect to. It really <laughs> shocked me quite a lot how long I was able to hold my breath for. Once you feel the need to breathe again, you take a deep breath in and hold that for 15 seconds. You then exhale comfortably and rinse and repeat the whole process all over again a further three or four times, depending on how you feel. So, initial opinions. Um, I would say that was very, very enjoyable, actually. Yeah, that was, that was very pleasant. I've done controlled breathing before, and I've tried meditation before, and this felt like a sort of fast track in both to reaching a more relaxed state, like especially on that long exhale out. After sit, I mean, you sit there and you just feel completely calm, and it was very, very nice, almost like this meditative state. I mean, to begin with, when you're doing the heavy breathing, you're hyperventilating deliberately, <laughs> so that's um, not the most... Oh. It's not unpleasant, but it's strange to do deliberately. It's a strange experience. But on that last final exhale and you breathe out all of your air, I mean, your whole body is tingling from your fingertips and your toes and everything. It's a strange tingling feeling throughout your whole body, which a bit scary, to be honest, when it, um, but after the second and third time, I kind of got used to it because you kind of just work, you accept it and you move through it and it's not that bad, but it was definitely a new experience. <laughs> Another thing was you could feel like my body temperature changing up and down, which according to the app is completely normal apparently. You can feel tingling and you can feel your body temperature changing and that's normal. And I feel like that was a very big help because if I'm being honest, if I felt that way without any prior knowledge other than how to do the breathing, I probably would have panicked and thought I was doing something wrong. Now that I've done the breathing, okay, comes the really fun part. I get to go and freeze myself in a really cold shower, so that's going to be, I'm sure that'll be just lovely. Right, so here we are, about to take a cold shower, right here. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not really looking forward to it, but you know, here we go. Let's just get it done, I guess. Oh, wish me luck. So all things considered, that was pretty good. My testicles are like right around my Adam's apple right about now because of the cold. But other than that, no, that was that was quite enjoyable. Yeah, that was quite nice. The initial shock, even though I was anticipating it, I managed to control it. But it was the the cold really it hits hard. Oh Jesus! Ah. It's bearable, but it's brisk, shall we say? Yeah, let's let's brisk. That's the point we're putting it cold, really fucking cold. Before doing this, I obviously researched it to see how to make it more bearable, and one of the big things they said was breathing, dipping your foot in first, and then holding your breath before you go in, letting the cold go over you, and then breathing out helps, and yeah, that made a huge difference. I mean, I thought I was gonna be sitting there gasping in the shower. As I say, still really, really cold, but bearable. In terms of the actual physical effects that I felt from doing this, I mean, there was nothing groundbreaking. I felt very, very refreshed, which was unsurprising considering it was a cold shower first thing in the morning. I've heard it's better for your hair and better for your skin, but I'm not going to be able to actually have a definitive opinion on that until a bit more time has passed. This is just my first time doing this, so if there are any benefits, I'm going to have to do this consistently for a fair while longer before I actually feel anything from it. I will say, doing the breathing before getting in the cold shower made a huge difference. Massive. I've taken cold showers in the past, they were completely unbearable for me. I'd be gasping, the cold water response would be immediate, I wouldn't be able to manage it and I'd end up just kind of gritting my teeth and toughing it out. Whereas this, this was cold, it was definitely hard, but it was very enjoyable. The cold felt cold, but 
for some reason just way more bearable than it has been in the past. Maybe it's the placebo, maybe it's because I want this to work, but in some way it does seem to affect your ability to withstand the cold, at least in this context. We won't know until later on. I've been doing this for about a week now and the cold showers are getting pretty easy so whether that's just my body getting used to the cold because of constant exposure or whether that's the method of working effectively I don't know yet but I'm basically just recording this part so that I can't back out of committing to what I'm going to do next. The next thing I plan on doing is hopping into an ice bath which they do recommend but if I'm being honest that sounds awful. <laughs> But you know, I've committed to it, it's on camera, and this will be edited and in the video before I've actually done it, so... can back out now, it's completely and utterly unavoidable. Right, here we are. Uh, and like I said, I've already committed to it before doing it, so I can back out now. Here's the bathtub. It's going to be full of ice soon, and then I'm going to jump in it, so that, that'll be fantastic, but you know, here we go. So, if you can't tell from that clip, I am pretty apprehensive at this point about actually getting into the ice bath, which is why I recorded that bit in the first place. It was to more or less bully myself into not chickening out and just doing it. Throughout the process of filling up that bathtub with water and sorting out my camera angles and everything, the stress was just beginning to mount and mount and mount, and I knew that with all of that happening, when I get into the bathtub, it's going to make all of the responses that much more extreme. By the time I'd filled that bath completely and I started putting the ice in, my stress had kind of reached critical mass. Oh god, I'm starting to feel regret now. Three, four. Let's feel how cold it is. Woo! Oh <laughs> That's gonna be really bad. Okay. So I started by just putting my feet in, as you would expect when getting into a bath, and that wasn't cold at all, to be honest. I didn't feel the cold even slightly, which gave me high hopes. I then lowered my lower half of the body into the water and I felt the cold immediately. I managed to control the cold water response but it was still incredibly cold. I sat there up to my waist in the water before I decided to slide down into the water with my torso, but not before showing off that belly that I have lovingly crafted during quarantine. The main problem I had throughout this process was the bath It wasn't actually big enough to fit me and I didn't fill it up with quite enough water. I think this made it feel worse because I wasn't able to just sit and be cold and deal with it. I had to keep moving around to try and cover parts of my body with the ice. All things considered though, I think it went quite well. I could have stayed in longer, but I wasn't comfortable to actually just sit in that bathtub. Ironically, that wasn't because of the cold, that was because of the shape of the tub itself. Right, so I've just gotten to the end of week two, and I'm just touching base to talk about the effects that I've felt so far. The breathing I like to begin with, so that's not surprising that I still like it now. However, the cold showers are another thing entirely. I'm surprised to say that I actually look forward to the cold showers now. They're one of the best parts of this. And it's very strange to want to get up in the morning and take a cold shower and enjoy it, but I'm loving it. After that cold bath, I feel like that was a psychological milestone. And now it's easier to more wholeheartedly embrace the cold as they keep talking about in all of these videos that I've watched online and all the stuff that I've researched from the app. That initial fear of the cold is now gone. So you're able to push yourself a bit more without as much anxiety about doing damage to yourself because you kind of feel out the parameters of your body and know to what level you can push yourself. The ice bath was very hard and I haven't filmed any of the other ones I've done, which I regret, but they've gotten significantly easier and it's not because I've gotten better at dealing with the cold, I think it's purely psychological. It's in my head because, as I said, I could have stayed in that other ice bath for longer than I did, but I didn't because of the shape of the tub. Let's talk about the health benefits so far. I, myself, am mildly asthmatic. I have been my entire life. The breathing has helped with this tremendously. Waking up and doing this very controlled breathing in the morning kind of sets me up for the rest of the day. One of the other things is my sleep seems to be much better. I feel more rested when I go to bed and I seem to fall asleep more easily. After doing some research, that is apparently a very common reason 
why people take cold showers that helps with sleep. One of the biggest things I think is also the change in psychology. Being able to get up every morning and start the day with something that's very rigorous and quite difficult by most people's standards it kind of sets you up psychologically to really get on with your day and feel good about moving forward and feel more productive. And that's helped a lot considering that I'm currently halfway through my final year of university. So that added motivation has been very, very helpful. One of the other things that you see Wim Hof talking about a lot on his app and in his videos is going into nature. It's fairly well known that spending a large amount of time in nature is good for your mental health and also having a large amount of fresh air can only really be good for you. So the next logical step from having an ice bath is to obviously go into the ocean. I live in Scotland and in case you're not from here, it gets pretty damn cold. The temperature outside at the moment is one degree Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I'll probably look it up later. And so the water is really cold. <laughs> but I did an ice bath and that was way easier than I expected. So I'm feeling pretty confident about going into the ocean. But we'll see if I eat those words or not. I might regret having said that. So the same deal as last time, I'm saying this to the camera now so that I can't back out later. Because at the end of this week, I will be going into the ocean. So you can't get out of this one, me. Let's do this. Right, where's the ocean? Here's me. Right, so before I actually get into the water, I sat down by the water, cross-legged, and did the breathing exercises. While I was doing it, I could feel my body acclimatizing to the cold, so by the time I'd taken my shirt off and gotten ready to walk towards the water, it didn't feel cold at all. In fact, when I first stepped into the water, I barely felt the cold at all. What I feel to mention, before I call, when I call myself out here, is that I am acutely thalassophobic. So this is going to be intensely nerve-wracking, but here we go. So in case you didn't hear that, I am thalassophobic. Really, really thalassophobic. Mind-blowing levels of thalassophobic. My record for getting freaked out by the ocean is going to my ankle depth, feeling the sand moving underneath my feet, freaking out and running right back out of the water. So needless to say, I'm a bit afraid of the ocean. Come on. It's cold, very cold, oh, but bearable, like I said. I'm gonna try and get out to my knees. Very nervous. Because of this fear of the ocean, I was doing things in order to make myself feel better. And what you might have noticed was me talking to myself. Come on, don't be a bitch, just do it. Come on, you got this. Woo! Oh, why did you talk to yourself so much? <sighs> yeah, looking back on that now, that's really, really cringy. But, but to be honest, in the moment it really helped, so I don't regret it. Alright, maybe a little bit, but not much. <sighs> Holy shit, it's cold. Lost the bun on my legs. Let's get the upper body in. Three, two, one. I'm gonna go ahead and blame freezing cold and my intense fear of the ocean for these horrible, horrible camera shots. Yeah, that's definitely why. It's not because I'm absolutely dope with filming. Fear of the water. That's, that's, we'll say that's what it was. So it actually turned out that that incredible cold helped with my thalassophobia a lot. I was so focused on dealing with the cold that once I was in the ocean, I was just able to ignore it because I was so focused on the breathing. I can't help but feel like that's one of the psychological aspects of the Wim Hof method, is that ability to conquer fear. I got to the point, as you can see later on, I'm actually dipping my face in the water and smiling like I enjoyed being in the ocean and I cannot emphasize to you enough how strange that is. I am terrified of the water. But maybe this will be the jumping off point for me conquering my thalassophobia. So I guess I'm gonna have to make a video on that as well and document me my pants. <laughs> That'll be good.
I'm gonna go ahead and put a disclaimer here. I was not there on my own. I brought someone with me and they had hot drinks in a flask clothes and a towel so if you're thinking about doing it don't just casually go to freezing cold water jump in it and just hope for the best make sure you take the necessary precautions right so final thoughts first things first would i recommend doing this yes yes i would Absolutely, this was so much fun. At the very least, it was a fun experiment to see what your body is capable of when you put your mind to it. And at the very best, it has all these amazing features that I've already talked about. I would urge anyone that's considering trying this to just do it, just to see what it's like, because this was fantastic, it was so much fun. I stand by what I said earlier, I feel like the most important aspect of this is psychological. What it's taught me about facing adversity and the mindset that you have whilst you do it, I feel like that is the most beneficial part of this. I would not say I've completely bought into it, there are certain aspects of the method that I think are just a bit too good to be true, but it definitely there is something here worth trying. Above all the other things, despite what your opinion on any of the medical aspects of it, or psychological aspects of it, this was just fun. It was a good way to distract me from stress in life, which I think, given the situation we're all in at the moment, is probably a really big plus for most people. So that's all, and thank you for watching, and hope to catch you in the next one.